Hey everybody out there, this is Seto, and today for you guys, I'm going to be profiling for you my Yusinju deck. Yusinju's originally got released back in Secrets of Eternity, but they got most of their support recently in the Secret Forces last month, and I've been playing them ever since. Uh, there's different ways you can play the deck. You Some people like playing it just as a fun pendulum type of deck, but I prefer playing the deck as a uh, anti-meta or stun type of deck. A stun variation. So it's really fun to play around with. Uh, this deck kind of reminds me of a couple of decks that I've played in the past. Uh, it kind of reminds me of an old school deck called Hunters because you go normal, normal, and then you can go for an Exceed monster. And that's kind of how this deck works. You normal, 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 and you can get, you know, three things out. I wish Shockmaster was kind of legal to play this deck, but in a way I still hate Shockmaster, but whatever. Uh, the other thing this deck kind of reminds me of is Spirits because they all bounce back to your hand doing the Ant in phase, which is kind of nice because they can't snatch and steal your monsters for the most part. But the deck's really fun to play around with. I've grown to kind of really enjoy it because I love anti-meta and stun type of decks. So this deck is really fun. So first we run our three Yusinja comma one. Yusinja comma one is your compulsory evacuation device on wheels for the most part, uh, except for the fact that compulse can target face downs. This can only target face up monsters. So that's the little difference on there. But still, very good card. Uh, he's 1,600 attack. Uh, most of the time, you will have a tanky out in the field, so he can get become 1,700, which is nothing to sniff your nose at. So, pretty good card. Then we run our three Yusinja comma two. Uh, Yusinja comma two is kind of the one with the weakest effect, I would guess you could say. But also, it has the upside because it's the monster with the highest attack normal summonable so it has 1800 attack uh, it is kind of nice and can win you games sometimes because of his effect you can lower it and he can attack directly for 1800 damage but they all have the effect like i have to say before all you send you monsters go back to your hand doing the end phase so you have to keep that in mind but still uh when you get two you know all three of the you send you monsters out you just could do a whole bunch of cool plays so next we run three you send your comma three uh, you send your comma three is your main searcher for searching out your seek. Excuse me. Uh, you send your secret moves. This is your main way of searching it out. But you can also search out any other you send you monsters that you need to get in your hand. So you can have you send your comma one, two, and three, or you can have you send you tuskets. I call them tuskets for some reason. Uh, Truskets. <laughs> but you see, it's mostly your searcher. It's the one with the weakest attack. Um, no, no more summonable, I guess you could say. Even though Tuskets, you can just boost him up himself. But, yeah, it's your main searcher. I've seen people play, only play two of them because they don't think they can get the effect off a lot. Or they just don't want a lot of secret moves. But, um, for the most part, I like running three. Uh, then we run Yusinjikama. I can't pronounce most of the Yusinjikama names. But uh, Yusinjikama Truskets, I call them. For some Juskets. I don't know. I can never pronounce his name correctly, even though I've played this deck for about three, four weeks now. <laughs> But Truskets is kind of like a mini Honest, or but kind of a little bit better in some respects because the fact that matters, you can boost his own attack up. So you can normal summon him along with the other Yusinju monsters, target himself, boost him up to two, you know, 2,000, and run over things, which is kind of nice. But you also can boost up another Yusinju monster if you want to and just do some things. Plus he can activate from hand, so you can use that if you have another Yusinju monster on hand. If you're trying to bait your opponent out or trying to do some little thing. So it's really nice. And I really like the cards at three of it. It's pretty good. Uh, then I run for your last, I guess you could say, you send you monster card. I run one you send you, uh, sh <laughs> one you send you L. Um, this card is pretty good. Some people don't like running it. Some people do. Uh, the main reason I run it personally is because I do run three you send you secret moves. And this makes you send you secret moves live more often I find. Uh, I've seen people play two of it. I've debated about running two you send you L, but um, it's pretty nice. I mean it can be a chunk blocker, worst case scenario, you normal summon it becomes a chunk blocker. You can put it in the pendulum zone and it can give be like a, my body is a shield, which is kind of nice. So I considered maybe bumping it up to two because it makes secret moves more live, but I like it just right now as a one of. Uh, originally, though, I was trying it out as a 2 of, but I kind of went to switch over to this card to try it out recently. Uh, I'm running one Thunder King Ryo. Um, originally, like I said, I was running another Yusinju uh, Arch L, but I thought about it. I said, well, one seems to be doing me good enough, 
And Thunder King, I've, I, I've seen other players trying out Thunder King, so I decided, you know what, I'll, I'll try Thunder King out. Let's see how it works. And Thunder King's been putting in some work because the fact of the matter is, all of your other ones pretty much bounce to hand besides L, or if you exceed for something. So Thunder King can stay on the board and just give you that little bit of board presence, which can be nice. And he can be kind of a stun type of card. Uh, if you have Thunder King and maybe a Vandy's emptiness up, it can be kind of hard to get over that. Um, but he just gives you some board presence and it's pretty nice in this deck. Uh, you don't have to run him. I'm just testing him out, but he has been proving to be uh, fairly good. So I like him in the deck as, as of right now. Then we run our three Fire Formation Tankies. Uh, Tanky works very well in this deck. All, most of your cards are Warrior Beast Monsters, so you can search out a lot of things. They, you know, you have Tanky on the field. They get a boost of 100. Happy all around. This deck is very consistent in uh, getting out all its you send you monsters. Some people don't like the deck, but I find it's very consistent. It can be uh, pretty dang fast. Uh, so next we run three Pod Dualities. Um, some people only like running two pod, duality, pod of dualities because they feel like it's a little bit cloggy. While I agree with you, agree with that statement in some decks, this deck I find for the most part is it doesn't really get cloggy. A dual, duality in this deck really doesn't get cloggy that much. I mean, unless you're going for a Lightning Chidori or Harpy's Pet Phantasmal Dragon or a Fire King Tiger King, a Fire King Tiger King. Uh, you're not going to special summon a lot. So I like running three of it. Do I find it gets cloggy? Yeah, once in a blue moon I find it, but I do like it as a 3 up because it can just thin your deck out, get you your combo pieces, set up plays, uh, make the deck very stunt oriented. And I've always felt that Pod Duality works best in stun type of decks, just like it did with Grave Keepers back in the day. So next I run 2 MST. Uh, the worst matchup for this deck I find, if you're playing this deck more main meta than Rogue, is Clifforts. That is this deck's Achilles heel, because Clifforts can just OTK this deck out the wazoo. So I would say if you're doing that, just make sure you side a lot of side deck hate for Cliff Wards in the Cliff Ward matchup in things like Mistake, uh, you know, Twisters, another MST, whatever. So make sure you do that because I find that its worst matchup against the main meta decks is Cliff Wards. Then we run one Dark Hole, one Regeki. Uh, Regeki, just good board clearance, attack with your, your Sinju monsters, boo boo. Uh, Dark Hole works pretty well because everything bounces to the hand, back to the hand for the most part, and so Dark Hole can just clear the for, uh, field and then leave it open for you to attack with your, your Sinju monsters. So I do like it because it can give you those little momo momentum swings which can lead to victory. Then we run for your one of spells, we run one Dimensional Fissure, one Book of Moon, one Snatch and Steal. Uh, besides the one of Regeki, we do run these cards because they come in handy. Uh, Defissure, just for the anti-meta because it can help against a lot of the main meta decks because they rely, they rely upon their graveyard. So Defissure can come in handy in that respect in messing up their graveyard just a little bit. Book of Moon, just a good versatile card, offensive and defensively. Snatch and Steal, steal their monster, attack them with it. What can I say about Snatch and Steal? Uh, but yes, you run those cards. Um, Yes, Defissure can hurt you a little bit, but for the most part, um, same thing with Macrocosmos. But I find that for the most part, however, um, they're going to hurt your opponent more than they're going to hurt you. Same reason why I've considered running Mistake in the main deck, uh, because it's going to hurt your opponent more than it's going to hurt you. Uh, that's what I found through running those type of cards. Um, next, we run three You Send You Secret Moves. Uh, <laughs> I see people play this card from 0 to 1 to 2 to 3. I, I, I really see the ratio of this card just being all over the place from people saying it's the, the worst card ever to people saying it's like Infernity Barrier for, to people saying it's just off. It's great. It's amazing. Um, I, I mean, it depends how you're playing the deck, I find. If you're playing, you send your uh, Arch L. It makes the card a little bit more uh, live. Um, depending upon how you play the deck, if you, use, you can use it mostly as an offensive swing. You know, just if you're attacking, you don't have to worry about a mirror force or a de-prison or something else that's, you know, battle trap type of things that can affect you. So it can be nice in that regard, and I like it because mirror force is a card that people are playing more of. So I do like it as a three of. I consider dropping it down to two. Originally, I was just playing two of it to play around with it, but then I tried three, and I said, eh, it, really, it works better as a three of, and... You know, worst case scenario, it's just MST bait, but it is a very good card overall. 
Then I run three Vandy's Emptinesses. Uh, Self-explanatory in this deck, I guess you could say. Uh, one of the few decks that I'll always run three Vandy's Emptiness in is because the fact of the matter is this deck normal summons, like I said, a lot more than its special summons, and it can just hurt your opponent ten times more, and it's going to hurt those main meta decks ten times more than it's going to hurt you. That's the kind of the adage with this deck. So next up I run, excuse me, uh, two Fiendish Chains. Uh, the reason I run Fiendish Chain over Breakthrough Skill in this deck, and granted I was thinking about running Breakthrough Skill originally and tried it out, but what I came to find out over the course of playing this deck for a couple of weeks is the fact of the matter is Fiendish Chain's a little bit better. Uh, why, you may ask, is because simply because of the fact of the matter is you're going to most of the time sometimes, and I hate this feeling when I'm looking at my board, is your field's going to be wide open. And when my field's wide open, I just get the jitters. I'm like, I don't, <laughs> I don't like that. So what Fiendish Chain can do is it can, you know, if, you are go if your opponent's going to attack you, and really hurt you. You can just go Fiendish Chain and permanently stop that monster from hurting you and attacking you and stop their effect if you want to. So that's the reason why I play Fiendish Chain over Breakthrough Skill to stop attacks because you, sometimes your board's gonna be wide open and I don't like that feeling. So that's why I run that Fiendish Chain over Breakthrough Skill in this deck uh, to stop my opponent from getting those hits in. Uh, same reason why I run Mirror Force uh, over Deep Prison with this deck. Uh, first off, it prevents your deck from getting OTK because you leave your board open a lot. Uh, most duels, yes, you're sometimes making Exceed or Thunder King or just do something else, but you know, for the most part, uh, your board's going to be open. And like I said, Mirror Force is a little bit better in that respect. Plus the fact that you run Macrocosmos and Defissure, this deck, this card can then become like a pseudo big, bigger version of Deep Prison or Black Sonic for Black Wings if you want to go that route. Um, and that can be really, really helpful. And if, if you have a macro up and you flip this up, they're going to be going, and they run into it, they'll be like, ooh, that hurts, that hurts. It's kind of like the same way that I've seen people play Mirror Force in um, Heroes. So I kind of took that little playbook, uh, page from that playbook and played it in this deck. So uh, two Mirror Forces prevent OTKs, gives you time to set up, clears the board, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, then for your other, other uh, la, 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 excuse me, tongue tied, your other one else, we run one Macro Cosmos, one bottomless, one solemn warning. Uh, no compulsory evacuation device, even though I love compulsory because we already have, already have our own compulsory evac pseudo compulsory evacuation card in Usinger comma one. So I don't feel the need to run it. I would rather run macro cos cosmos over you know compulse. Uh, so compul macro stops the main meta decks. Bottomless stops those type of decks. Solemn warning just stops the card from hitting the field. Just good cards in general. Then on to the extra deck. Uh, pretty much I would have to say the main deck for this deck is pretty cheap. It's only when it comes to the extra deck that this deck gets really expensive. And people are going to ask me, you know, a lot of people say, well, you have to run two Lightning Chidorians. And I'm going to personally tell you right now as a player uh, and playing this deck, the only reason I have two Lightning Chidorians is because I played Harpies and um, other decks that I could use Lightning Chidorian back in the day, uh, as you see my Harpies play map. But... Beside that fact, um, you only really need one heart, like in Chidorian. You don't need two. You just need one. So if you are, if you have one, don't feel bad about not having two, uh, because all you need is two. Lightning Chidorian is very good in this deck, but it's not completely necessary. You can just play. You could even play it without it, but it just can come in handy in certain situations. Then we run one Fire uh, Brotherhood of the Fire King. Uh, excuse me, Brother <laughs> Brother of the Fire Fist Tiger King. One Harpy's Pet Phantasmal Dragon. This card can be really problematic for some certain decks because they most of the time don't have a main deck out for it, uh, which can be really nice. And plus, because we don't have Shockmaster, it can come in handy. Um, then we run 103 Ragnar Zero for like Quila Pulse or whatever else gets attack boost. Then we run one Diamond Dire for just spot removal, uh, which can come in handy because you do run Beast Warriors. One Dark Rebellion Dragon XYZ. Uh, one number 50 Black Ship of Corn. So we run those. Uh, the reason I run Black Ship of Corn is because some people are now starting to uh, side deck in, well, main deck in uh, things like uh, like the hands again, and Black Ship of Corn can just help me get around that. We only want one Castell, one 101, one Abyss Dweller for 
just in the odd chance they, you know, my Mac broke so D Fisher is not up. So you run those just in case. You have a lot of extra room in the extra deck to run whatever rank fours you really want to because you don't really always go into them. One Krogonic Illuminescent Knight. One number 82 Heartland Drago. Very clutch card I'll talk about in a second. One Gaga Deck Cowboy. Just go for the extra 800 burn damage to win. And one Evil Swarm Exiton Knight at the end. Uh, so if you're wondering, you know, if you don't want to spend a lot on this deck and you don't have the money, uh, what main cards would I say you would have to run in the extra deck? I would have to say Heartland Drago, Cowboy, Harpy's Pet Phantasmal Dragon can be really nice. Um, and maybe if you can, scratch up one Lightning Chidorian and one Fire of the Brotherhood, Brother of the Fire First King, uh, and Diamond Die Wolf. Those are the main extra deck monsters you I really go into the most. The other ones are just in there for certain situations that may arise. And this deck is really fun to play with. Uh, it's really anti-meta-like, and I really enjoy it because of that main reason. It's really fun to play. It's awesome. It's cool. Um, the only thing I wish this deck did have, as I end this video, is I wish the deck did have, and I'm hoping it will have in the future maybe, a XYZ you send you monster. And why do I say that? Is because if you XYZ into it, you know, and it stays on the field, that's just going to make your secret moves that much more live and make the deck... 10 times more better. So if they just get a level 4 um, exceeds monster, I think this deck would be set to be a very, very good deck. I just feel like they're missing one or two cards to just become that great, great, great deck and be a great stun type of deck. But we'll have to wait and see what happens to the deck. But till next time, guys, take care, have fun dueling, good luck dueling. I hope you all enjoy this deck profile. Uh, it's a really fun anti-stun deck. There's certain other things you can run, you know, against certain meta decks if you want to make this deck more competitive. But I find that the best thing uh, through playing this deck and taking it to a local tournament recently is to play those cards in the side deck. Uh, Anti-spell fragrance, I've never been. It's a good card. It can slow down Neckles. It can slow down Quillapults and things like that. But still, I mean. I feel that that's better for the side deck, especially if you're going to a regionals or a local tournament because people are not always going to, you know, run Quill Pulse, Neck Pulse, things like that. They, you know, and that deck can be a hindrance in the main deck and you have to side it out anyways in those type of matchups. So I find it's better in the side deck. Uh, same thing with the third, you know, Space Typhoon. If you want to run three, go right ahead, but that's just me. Uh, I find there's a lot of anti-meta hate you can run in this deck to make it very efficient is what I'm trying to get to at the end of the day. But till next time, guys, take care. Have fun dueling. Good luck dueling. I hope this deck was very informative. You learned about the deck a little bit more. You understood how it functions as an anti-meta stun type of deck. And until next time, guys, take care, everybody. Seto Kaiba, I'm out of here, guys. Till next time. Good luck dueling to all of you.